We tested six knife defense techniques and then asked an emergency room doctor to let us know what injuries we had exactly and to learn if we died or survived. And here's what knife defense testing looks like. Yet while I practiced and learned knife defense techniques for over 15 years, not even once I was asked by my instructor to test them. This made me realize that many knife defense techniques that are taught actually don't even work. But until you test them, you can never know which ones do, because most of them sound great in theory or work against unresisting opponents, yet everything changes once you put them to the test. That's why I asked three MMA fighters to attack me with markers, to see what injuries we sustained as we chose four popular online knife defense techniques techniques to test and then also did two more secret knife defense moves. The first technique was demonstrated by Brazilian Jiu Jitsu experts. We tried each of the techniques first without resisting to learn the mechanics behind it. And then for 15 seconds, my attackers went all out while I tried to rely on the chosen technique. Do take note that I did my best to focus and do only the suggested technique instead of heavily improvising while my attackers did their best to stick with the attack shown in the knife defense video. Here's what happened. Then I show the injuries I sustained to an emergency room doctor to learn if I died or survived. It's important to note that the doctor made it clear that while these guesses are educated, they are still speculative, since the injuries also would strongly depend on the angle and depth of the knife cuts and stabs, something we couldn't measure this time. Still, what the doctor told me I found most fascinating. My guess would be that uh, your spleen was injured, and that's the organ when injured bleeds a lot as well. Your lung is starting somewhere here, the lung might have been punctured, so you might have started to feel uh, short of breath mm -hmm. in a few minutes. But in a few minutes, meaning I could have still fought, like, or do you think I would just pass out after the first 10 seconds? No, I think you, you would be able to defend for some time. And then later run out of yeah. oxygen and, oh wow. But if the knife would be long enough, it could reach your uh, aorta. And if your aorta would be damaged, this could lead to immediate death. With spleen, okay. you still would have some chances. Okay, even with like a bunch of holes possible to survive. If you're transported to the hospital immediately and they, <laughs> right. they operate on you immediately, you, you would have chances. This, I'm looking This is not else? dangerous. If it's superficial, it's just your skin, mm. uh, your muscles, mm. and, but there are no major arteries. Let's see if some more a major artery is injured in this place, you mm. could still compress it and move on. It might be hard to fight right. with your muscles injured, but it's not that deadly as your spleen. Before we moved on to the second knife defense technique, I also gave a chance for my MMA friend to try out the first method himself. We then moved on to the second technique, one which was very dear to me. Since it was an Aikido knife defense technique I learned for over a decade. Yet when we put it to the test, here's what happened. Looks like this guy knew what he was doing. <laughs> uh, no wonder that was the case, since my attacker was not only an MMA fighter, but also a nurse. The majority of the stabs were in your chest, and mm -hmm. uh, this is where your heart is. These stabs uh, look like they, they are uh, right to the heart and uh, might lead to immediate death. And so. this one is like to your lung or your spleen again. Mm. Yeah, what about this, this place? But uh, that's nothing major, I would say. It's from the outside of your arm and all the major arteries in, is from, are from the inside. One knife defense expert was telling me that you can sacrifice the outside but have to protect the inside. It's not that's as correct. bad. Yeah. I would get to the hospital immediately, but I have these stab wounds. Probably my chances are still low to survive. It all depends on the time you get to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Survival rate is quite low, these stab wounds. I guess there's always a miracle chance. It's less than 10%, I would say. At least some. <laughs> And here's how my MMA friend fared using the same technique. The third technique was a knife defense method demonstrated by Krav Maga instructors. This time it included a stab from above.
Something interesting we all noticed was that our natural instinct when defending ourselves against knife attacks wasn't to do the suggested techniques, but instead to rely on our wrestling skills. I just want to go like to these kind of these things versus like play around here yeah. and focus on this. And here's what the doctor had to say about the injuries. You sustained a lot of uh, puncture wounds to the outside of your left arm that might have impaired your movements because of intense pain in this arm. You could be disabled with this one, two on this shoulder, mm. and two on this shoulder. Again, it's muscles, and right. if it's deep enough, uh, you could have punctured the lungs on both sides. Oh, even from here? Yeah, both of your lungs are punctured, would leave you out of breath mm -hmm. quite, quite fast. You would still survive, but you uh, would struggle with air. This, I would guess, is on your the right side of your sternum. This would be going to your lung again, or the bone if you're lucky. That Leg. might be real dangerous because really? there's a femoral okay. artery going through this place, and that's a major artery of your leg. If it's like cut through, right. you would bleed immediately. And this is how my friend fared against the knife attack relying on the Krav Maga technique. The fourth technique we did was presented by our Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt and former police officer Paul Sharp. And this technique had the most promise, as I knew from talking to Paul that he developed the method while doing lots of pressure testing and analyzing real-life knife attacks. So I was curious to see how it will do in our test. What I have to stop first is this rotation right here. If I just do this and hang on for a second, we have attachment, but we aren't connected. He can still rotate, which is where the damage is gonna start happening. So the first thing I wanna do is connect my whole forearm across his chest right here. My second hand is gonna do what? Monitor that hand. And I'm just gonna drop my shoulder in here, that connection again, right? I wanna know where he's at, and I'm gonna put both hands on here like a baseball bat. I'm just gonna switch, put my shoulder behind his. Go. Not many marks, but I guess it's not about the quantity, it's mm -hmm. about the quality. This one, from what I understand so far, not so bad. Not that bad, yeah. What about this one? I, I, I see from your expression, yeah. probably not. <laughs> His movement was like right. on the underside. Right. Your thigh would be upwards, right? Mm -hmm. So that's for your heart again. You Going. might have punctured your heart with that one. It doesn't look like the yeah. heart. And we're bending but, over like right. that. Right. Yeah. If the heart is stabbed, any chance you could give like a percentage <laughs> of survival? I, I would not speculate, but uh, you right. would need a surgery quick to survive. Unfortunately, while this technique was much more effective than the others, it still led me to a potential death, reminding once more just how dangerous knife attacks are, even if you are well equipped to defend against them. And before we moved on to the two secret techniques, this is how my MMA friend did while using Paul Sharp's technique. And finally, it was time for the secret technique number one, which was suggested by none other than the famous Master Wong, done while sitting on a bench. You go quickly return this hand, this hand inside, and then your hand from here, straight away smack on your face, turn this arm like this, and what he do? Step on your fucking nuts, and then turn it over, no fingerprint. <laughs> It's the same guy. It's the nurse who knows how to kill. He was aiming for your heart again and your spleen. Damn. I have to ask him if that is intentional or subconscious. And for secret technique number two, we try the technique presented by my friend, Jesse Enkamp. This hand, the same side as the knife, goes on the inside to bridge the gap between the knife hand and your throat. So don't come from over the top, because he will see that and you might hurt yourself. And at the same time, your other hand slaps his face. Because if you do it from this angle, he will see it. No. Oh, wait, no, no. whoa, 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 whoa. Let me start, let me start. Actually, you know what? Let, let me start. Let, okay, okay. Let okay. me start, yeah, okay. because yeah, you're yeah. not intending to use the knife. Okay, I'm dead. <laughs> so this, the neck thing would have killed me and disconnected me very quickly, or? You would pass out and 
few seconds. Damn, just like in movies. If you want to see how a world-class knife defense expert defend against my knife attacks, click here. Thanks for watching and keep owning your journey.